Amen. Hallelujah. So good to be in the presence of God. Praising God that he kept us all safe and meeting our needs these past days and has given us one more day to come together and worship the Lord. All of us know that we are um, trying to shorten um, the time of worship today um, so that we could go to the general body right after this. And uh, I just want all of us to come back to the message that I started preaching uh, last Sunday from the book of Hosea, chapter 14. Um, you know, the Lord entreating the people of Israel to return to him, asking the people to return to the Lord. And also the Lord promises uh, meeting certain preconditions if they come back to the Lord, what he will do for them, what he will do for them. So we uh, had the first part uh, talked about last Sunday, and I want to continue the latter half of that uh, today. And we were, in fact, last week talking about the preconditions that the Lord had laid down uh, for coming back to him. Let me read that passage once again, because it is God's word, and uh, anything that we speak is based on God's word. So, Hosea chapter 14, verses 1 through 9, till the last verse. Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God, for you have stumbled because of your iniquity. Take words with you and return to the Lord. Say to him, take away all iniquity and receive us graciously, that we may present the fruit of our lips. Assyria will not save us, we will not ride on horses nor will we say again our God to the work of our hands, for you, in you the orphan finds mercy. I'll heal their apostasy, I will love them freely, for my anchor has turned away from them. Verse 5, I'll be like the dew to Israel, he will, be, he will blossom like the lily, and he will take root like the cedars of Lebanon. His shoots will sprout and his beauty will be like the olive tree and his fragrance like the cedars of Lebanon. Those who live in the shadow, uh, those who live in his shadow will again rise grain and they will blossom like the wine. His renown will be like the wine of Lebanon. O Ephraim, what more have I to do with idols? It is I who answer and look after you. I am like a luxuriant cypress. From me comes your fruit. Whoever is wise, let him understand these things. Whoever is discerning, let him know them. For the ways of the Lord are right, and the righteous will walk in them, but transgressors will stumble in them. Very telling, very beautiful passage of scripture. Um, which could really, really, um, you know, teach us so many things about returning to the Lord, the importance of returning uh, to the Lord. Now, the Lord is not only laying preconditions about uh, the return uh, of the people. Uh, you know, we have looked at the preconditions that the Lord says, if you want to come back to me, the first thing that you have to uh, uh, accept is that it is by your mistake that you have fallen. You have fallen by your own mistakes. That is the first step of returning to the Lord. Instead of blaming somebody else, blaming God, blaming others, uh, blaming the church, blaming your brothers, sisters, your family, or your situations even, blame, find that you yourself have done mistakes. It is by your mistake you have fallen. So accept the responsibility for your Departure, because of which you have departed from the Lord. Second precondition that the Lord lays, uh, lays down is that you, when you come to me, come with words. What are the words? You know, with repentance. And that is very clearly told in this. Uh, what are the words? Take words with you and return to the Lord. Don't simply uh, come back to the Lord without saying anything. Come back with words. And what are those words actually? Saying, 
take away all our iniquity and receive us graciously that we may present the fruit of our lips lord so that our worship may be acceptable to you so take away our iniquity and lord you please graciously accept us accept us graciously so take words with you make an honest confession to the lord as we come back even today as we come back to the lord if you have been away from the lord by some means some way you know come back to the lord accepting our mistake and also making an honest confession say to the lord lord i am so sorry for all that i have done forgive me receive me graciously your lord so that i'll be able to offer uh, the fruits of my lips otherwise the worship is useless without confessing without coming back to the lord without accepting our mistakes the worship that you offer becomes useless hope every one of us would be able to really make honest confession and uh, come back to the lord today let me go forward third step that the lord uh, mentions there that i had already preached about last sunday abandon your old ways you know um confession without abandoning is of no use even if you confess 100 times 1000 times every day without abandoning without having the intention of leaving out or abandoning your old ways of life it is of no use etra anudavichalum pale valigale vittu kalayunnilla engil oru prayojanam illa there is no use and that's what the prophet is telling to the people of israel uh, or the lord is telling through the prophet that if you don't abandon your old ways then you are coming back is of no use even today even as we try to come back to the lord if at all we are coming to the lord or if you have tried coming to the lord we make sure we must make sure that we abandon our old ways what are the old ways some of them are mentioned here the uh, he is asking the people to say or understand that assyria will not save you assyria only destroyed them they knew that very well or in other words they have to say that you know our trust on others the people around the nations around that the people that we thought uh, from whom the help would come they that help is useless assyria will not save us say to ourselves also this morning others will not save us the people that who, that we are looking up to we thought would help us will not save us hallelujah let us also say that assyria will not save us or we will not trust in, in our military might we will not ride on the horses we will not uh, trust on our own strength we will not trust on our military might things that we have attained things that we have uh, become experts uh, in and our uh, our our tendency of trusting in them and uh, you know asking the people to say that your military might will not save you it's not by might no by power but by my spirit says the lord you know and uh, so your military might will not save you you will not ride on horses and say thinking that the strength of the horse is yours and so that will bring victory for you that also will not work for you and no idol worship the lord is asking the people to say farewell to all kinds of idolatry all kinds of idolatry i spoke at length last sunday about this and i don't want to stay there but at least just to mention that we will not say to our work my god you are my god to the work of my hands i will not say again we have been saying it we have been doing that uh, many a times right we have been saying to the work of our hands you are my god how many of us have been saying that to the work of our hands as i mentioned last sunday many of us said to our family you are my god many of us said to our children you are my god to our career you said many of us said you are my god to our health we said um, you are my god to our workouts we said you are my god 
my job, my talents, you said, you are my God. None of these, none of these would save me. I will not say to any of these that you are my God. Or in other words, whatever has the potential to become a false God, be renounced very, very clearly. Anything that has the potential to become a false God for you, that which you tend to worship, that which almost takes your attention away from the Lord and making you to focus on those, be renounced in the name of the Lord this morning, saying that I will never again say that you are my God to the work of my hands, to the work of even my health, my wealth, my future concerns. I will not say to any of these, you are my God, you are my God. Praise God. Now, when we come back to the Lord like this, the Lord makes a few promises and that's what we are going to look at uh, today. Verses 4 to 8. You know, once you come back like this, you are ready to claim the promises of God. Are you all here? Look at me. You have to tolerate me as long as I stand here. Right? Whether I look handsome or not, doesn't matter. So please look at me. Not, not here and there. And also no other distraction as much as possible. Okay. Uh, claim God's promises for the future. Once you come back, you can start claiming the promises of God for the future. You know, true repentance and true return to the Lord always is enjoined and followed by restoration. And, you know, unqualified, undeserving mercy of God. I, every time, I have read this passage a number of times. And every time, whenever I read this passage, it really, really blesses me so much. I look at the, the, the unqualified way in which the Lord promises his mercies, his blessings in the lives of the people. You know, you come to the Lord with specific repentance and you see specific restoration. You come to the Lord with specific repentance and you see all the unqualified blessings and mercies of God being poured on poured to you, bestowed on you. That is the promise of God's word. Look at God's promises. One by one, I just want to quickly deal with those. First of all, the Lord says, I will heal. I will heal. How many of us need a healing this morning? The Lord says, I will, I will heal. It's not only the physical healing that the Lord is talking about. The Lord is talking about the spiritual healing also. The Lord says, I will heal you from your apostasy. I will heal you from the backsliding to which you had gone to the backslidden state, I will heal you. Whatever losses you had incurred, had occurred in your life, will be restored to you. Whatever you have lost in the course, in the time, during the time, when you were away from the Lord, the Lord says, I will return to you. Right? That is what the book of Joel says that uh, if you return to me with wailing and mourning with true repentance, not re renting your clothes, but renting your hearts, then I'll I will deal wondrously with you. Wondrously with you. You will eat and drink in plenty and you will start praising God who has dealt with you so wonderfully, so wondrously, right? That is the wonderful promise of God. And uh, uh, so the Lord says, I will heal you. I will heal you of your apostasy, your backslidden state. I will heal you, give you the physical healing that you need, the spiritual healing that you need, and the healing in different areas is the work of the Lord. The Lord promises that you just come back to me. I will heal you. The Lord says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord. 
There are so many I am sayings in the word of God and one of those is that I am the Lord that healeth thee. Right? I send my word and heal your diseases. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Amen? Our Lord is the healer. Can we claim it whether it is spiritual, physical or in any other area? Let us claim it today because our God is the healer. He is still the healer. He does wonders and miracles. Even today we almost see his healing power working in the lives of our people among us almost every day. Hallelujah. Let us trust on that renewed promise this morning. As we go through difficult times, say continuously, my God is the healer. He is the God who heals me. Let us continue to claim that. The Lord says, I will love you. I will love you. You know, it is worth seeking, right? How better it is, the love of God. The Lord says, I will love you. And then he says, I love you freely. Free measure of love. Because I have turned away from my anger towards you. To the people who come back to the Lord, the Lord says, I have turned away from my anger, so I will love you. How I will love you? I will love you freely. Freely. Free measure of God's love. How much can he love me? How much can he love you? And the word of God gives us a proof. If he did not even spare his own son and gave him up for all of us, will he not give us everything along with him? If he did not spare even his own son, Thanda sonda butraneyum adiriyad namukallavar kumendi elpichu thandavan Look at his love. Look at his love. I, I kept, you know, uh, seeing that poster in many places where a question is raised. I asked the Lord how much you love me. And then you, you said this much and you spread your hands. Stretched your hands and died on the cross. And that is the, what the Lord is speaking to us this morning also. This much I loved you. I did not even spare my own son. And the Lord says, I will love you freely. That is the promise of the Lord. The Lord will love us freely. And the Lord gives us a few imageries uh, in the rest of the passage. Beautiful imageries from the nature. God promises for our fruitfulness. Let us look at them. First one, the Lord says, I will be like dew for you. Look at the beautiful promises, right? The Lord says, and the imageries are so beautiful. The Lord says, I'll be like dew for you. What is the meaning? My grace, like dew, will cover you. My grace, every day, every day. The hills of Lebanon is full of all kinds of ugly rocks, ugly looking black rocks, you know. And every evening you will be able to see the, the hill covered with all those rocks. It's not a good scene. It's not a good sight. And you might say, oh, this is not a good, you know, looking hill. All these ugly looking um, rocks are there. But the next morning, all those rocks, the entire hill is covered by dew again. Covered by dew. Beautiful. Looking so beautiful. That is what the Lord says. I'll be like dew for you. Covering you by my grace. Who of us needs that this morning? Hallelujah. Being covered by the dew of God's grace. Being covered by the dew of of God's grace, causing flourishing, flourishing and growth and beauty and soothing experience, right? In Florida, you don't get snow, but we had plenty of that in New Jersey, right? Sorry, we could not bring any. 
You don't want? But it looks so beautiful. So beautiful. It's such a soothing experience. You know, and without uh, uh, a year going by without a snow, you know, it, it becomes real difficult for the people there to have enough water and, uh, uh, you know, good um, pro, uh, yield of the crops and will all be difficult without real snow there. You know, snow causes so many things that flourish, is causing flourishing growth and beauty and soothing experience, so mild and gentle, so different, and the change will be significant. The look will be so different. The Lord says, I'll be like dew for you. Hallelujah. Come back to me. The Lord says, I'll be like dew for you. My grace will cover you. Hallelujah. Then the Lord says, you will blossom like lilies, lilies, blossom like lilies, hallelujah. Bloss this lilies has, have a special, uh, uh, you know, characteristic that they, they come up everywhere, wherever they are found, uh, you know, they come up uh, in uh, Asi from nowhere. As soon as the rainy season is over, they come up everywhere in the valleys, in the hillside, and the streets, uh, by the sides of the street and all. These lilies just, you know, germinate. They just start growing and the entire place will be covered in no time. They will just be full of flowers and it will be a beautiful scene. They will fill the valleys and the mountains. The Lord says, I'll be like, you will blossom like, lilies means, you know, your growth, your, uh, you know, bringing out the flowers, everything will be so fast. In no time, in no time, you will be restored and the blossoming will take place. It will be so fast. You don't have to wait for ages and ages and ages, but it will all happen so fast. Amen. Once you come back to the Lord, come back to the Lord, you know, you are also going to blossom so fast like the lilies. And the change in you will be so fast. How many of us believe that? As we come back to the Lord, the change will be so fast. Hallelujah. You will blossom like the lilies. Hallelujah. Not only that, you will blossom like the lilies. They, they are so weak, those plants. But the Lord says, you are not going to be weak. Next thing, next imagery, you will be like the cedars of Lebanon, right? You will be, you will take roots like the cedars of Lebanon. Don't ever think that you are going to be weak like the lilies. But you will, your, your roots will go deep down like the cedars of Lebanon. Strong winds, you know, they, they blow against the cedars, but they stay unmoved. You know why? Because their roots go so deep, so deep. And that's why people say there are singing cedars. When the wind blows against them, they stand and firm and they start singing. Of course, their branches may, might move, but a cedar tree just stands there because the roots have gone so deep. The Lord says, you come back to me, I'll be like dew to you, and uh, you will start uh, growing so fast, but not only that you will grow fast, but your roots will go down so deep, and you will stand strong. Child of God, the promise of the Lord is that as you come back to the Lord, you will stand strong. Because your roots will go down deep. We are not only supposed to receive the Lord and say that call ourselves as Christians and disciples, but it is, uh, it is told us, told uh, in, in, in the word of God that we have to be rooted in Christ, in the word of God. Yesu Christuvine kai kondadu vole, avandakutai mel nadapi navanil 
വേരൂന്നിയും ആത്മീക വർദ്ധന പ്രാപിച്ചും കൊണ്ടിരിപ്പീൻ വേരൂന്നണം going deep down in the lord and the lord promises that if you come back to me meeting these preconditions you your roots will go down deep how many of us really pray that 2022 will be a year when the roots will really go down not simply the shoots not simply uh, uh, you know what is seen outside but the roots will really go down that no wind no storm no struggle no affliction will be able to finish me toss me back and forth but i'll stay strong because the roots are going to go deep down and that is what the lord promises your roots will go down very deep like the cedars of lebanon god promises the strengthening of your faith your life this year as you return to the lord or for the future hallelujah it's not the end your shoots will sprout shoots will sprout talking about expansion how many of us wants expansion say expansion expansion let this be a year of expansion the lord says not only that you will sprout and grow start growing like lilies and your roots will go down like the cedars of lebanon but your your branches will sprout right the shoots will sprout taking claiming expansion as i was preparing sitting with this message i ask the lord lord let this year be a year of expansion for our church in every way in our spirituality in our in in our families in all the ways in all the areas for which we are praying let this be a year of expansion claim it in jesus name amen amen, amen. believe it believe it and claim it in jesus name lord this be a year of expansion in every way spiritually materially as families the lord says you will be beautiful his beauty will be like the olive tree how many of us want to be beautiful the lord says you will be hello nobody wants to be beautiful then why all the makeups right all the cosmetics go into your bathroom and see all the items that are there somebody said a woman has 335 items in the bathroom and a man has six items in his bathroom why all the cosmetics i am not talking about any of you here but you know elsewhere but the lord says you will be beautiful you will be beautiful your life will be beautiful looking at you the people will say oh you really show the beauty of jesus let the beauty of jesus be seen in me all his wondrous compassion and purity oh the spirit divine right oh the spirit divine all my nature refine till the beauty of jesus be seen in me hallelujah that is our aim that is our goal till the beauty of jesus be seen in us the lord says you will be beautiful that is the beauty i'm talking about the lord says if you come back to me i'll give you such beauty the beauty of my character the beauty of my humility my love my sacrificial nature my 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 everything my love the lord says you will be beautiful let me finish very quickly the lord says you will also have fragrance right his fragrance like the cedars of lebanon 
You will have the scent like that of the cedars of Lebanon. Your life will be one of fragrance, not of stinking smell. You will not be smelling like the skunks, you know. Again, talking about a spiritual smell, the fragrance, fragrance. The people would really smell you and say, what fragrance? The fragrance of Jesus, right? The fragrance of Jesus. I told you about the cedars, you know. Whenever there is a forest fire and the cedars start burning, the cedars, uh, uh, you know, they give out a sweet smelling fragrance in the fire, in the fire. The Lord says, you will also have the fragrance like that. Hallelujah. Not when everything is all right, but even when you go through fire, experiences of fire, as you go through all kinds of afflictions, what will come out? Are you here? What will come out? Your fragrance will come out. Sweet smelling. Sweet smelling offering you will be. Hallelujah. Uru saurabhi vasani aithi. Kastangal varimol marathu paranyum. Piruburuthum. Kruva nashta padithim. Kartavil nun dura poyum. Okay, Allah namal varthi kenda the pradigari kenda the. But bringing out this sweet smelling fragrance, right? The most important thing that I see there, the Lord says, after that, those who live in his shadow will again grain rise. Not only you will be blessed, but even those who live in your shadow will also be blessed. Did you get that? No? Not only that you will be blessed, but even those who live in your shadows will also be blessed. It cannot be for a Christian that you are blessed, but others are not blessed. Ningla and Grey Kapudum, Matar Kudu Wodikil and the Arkham Barayam Patatilla. If you are blessed, others will also be blessed. And that's what the Lord says. Even those who live in your shadows will be blessed. They will also become fruitful. It's my prayer for all of you, for myself. That I in no way should live for myself, myself, but others who live in our shadows, who live up to, who look up to us, who belong to our family, our friend circle, people with whom we have give and take a relationship, we are people with whom we relate every day, they will all be blessed. They will also be blessed. They will also be blessed. Because you are there in that class, your classmates will be blessed. Because you live in a particular place, your neighborhood be blessed. Because you are the head of the family, that family being blessed. Because you are a person belonging to that family, that family being blessed. Because you are part of this church, the church being blessed. Even those who live in your shadow will be blessed. I believe it, I believe it, I believe it, and I pray that all those who are attached to us, relating to us, be blessed in the name of the Lord. Amen. The Lord concludes it by saying in verse 8, your fruitfulness is in me. All this, don't ever think that you can attain it by yourself. Your fruitfulness is in Enil Ninaka Palam Kandagitu. Your fruitfulness will be in me, however much you try yourself making all the efforts. You're not going to be fruitful. But the Lord reminds every one of us your fruitfulness is in me. Did you hear me? Keto. Your fruitfulness is in me. Amen. Hallelujah. All my springs of joy are in you. This one and that one together say. All my springs of joy 
Hari ini City, O oh city, glorious things are spoken of you. All my springs of joy are in you. Our springs of joy are in the Lord. There is nothing that gives us absolute joy outside of Christ, outside of God. Our ultimate joy is in God. And the Lord reminds us, you will find fruitfulness in me, in me. If any of us is trying outside of the Lord, making all kinds of efforts, the Lord says your fruitfulness will be in me. Hallelujah. Let me conclude here. Verse 9. Discover the ways of the Lord and submit yourself. All the preconditions that the Lord has laid, we have heard about that. And the promises that the Lord has made, we have heard that also. The imageries with which the Lord is speaking, we have looked at them. And the final challenge is what? Discover. Discover the ways of the Lord and submit yourself. Discover the ways of the Lord. How many of us will say today, Lord, that's what I want to do. Not a one-time submission, not a one-time surrender. But on a daily basis, this is what I, would, I intend to do throughout the year. Throughout the year. What is that? I want to discover your ways and submit myself. And the Lord concludes by saying, the wise and the prudent and righteous will follow the Lord. If you're wise, if you're prudent, you will discover the ways of the Lord. You will submit yourself. You will follow him. Let the wise understand. Let the discerning people look to the Lord this morning. Because the ways of the Lord are right. But the transgressors will stumble in them. The transgressors will stumble. But the ways of the Lord are right. If you are wise and prudent, you will look to the Lord. You will follow the Lord. Submit yourself. Live in submission. Choose this day, children of God, dear ones. Life or death, light or darkness. If you want to really return to the Lord and be blessed or transgress and stumble, choice is yours. Choice is yours. If you want to really return to the Lord and be blessed and to claim all these promises, these are ours. Shall we close our eyes, bow our heads in the presence of God? Hallelujah.